Welcome back to Ladies of Another View, and I want to welcome back our guest, Stefan Padfield. He is with the Free Enterprise Project, which is one of the National, National Center for Public Policy Research Programs. And uh, we're going to go to Crazyville for a little bit here. We think it's bad, <laughs> but I love your last article. Let's read the title here. NASDAQ's absurd diversity role will replace women with men who identify as women to achieve equality for women. So break that down for us, Stefan. Sure. So uh, we are one of the plaintiffs challenging this uh, new rule that has been promulgated by NASDAQ and approved by the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. And just by way of background, most people will know that we've got two of the major stock exchanges in the U.S. are the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. So this is going to capture a lot of our biggest corporations. And these exchanges are private entities, but they do have a relationship with the government by way of the SEC. Uh, that does tee up the potential for state action. And one of our set of arguments is that essentially when the SEC approves this rule and all the NASDAQ rules have to be approved by the SEC, that that is sufficient state action to bring in uh, issues like equal protection and then First Amendment, uh, you know, compelled speech issues. And we've made those claims. And those are part of the, um, uh, the, the case that we're that we're pushing forward right now. But what my article focused on is that in this rule that essentially uh, requires corporations to disclose whether or not they have two or more members of uh, listed uh, common uh, minority groups, right, uh, on their board of directors, and if not, why, uh, that's the rule that has been put forth and that we're challenging. And what I focused on in that rule that I dubbed to be quite absurd, and most people I've talked to agree, is that when it comes to women, that's one of the categories, right, so so one of the, the two slots should be a woman, that you can have a man who identifies as a woman. So when you put this all together, what you have is you could have a nine-person corporate board made up of all white men. And as long as one of them identifies as a woman and another identifies as black, which the rule also uh, talks about self-identifying for uh, that racial minority status as well, uh, you could claim to be satisfying these diversity rules. And it's absurd because to the extent one can surmise that part of the goal here is to advance women's equality, to be allowed to satisfy this rule with men who identify as women uh, is quite problematic. It doesn't even just, make sense. No. I mean, you go back to, okay, affirmative action, and you people were getting into colleges based on their skin color, not their academic, academic achievements, and there was a downfall with that. So now, all these women right activists, so now you're going to have men thinking they're women that now are going to take their place in the workforce so is it based on merit or based on what you It's definitely paint not based up? on merit. I know. I am so, so tired of mediocre men taking my stuff and I had to really think hard about the word I was going to use. If you are really pro female and pro women's rights, then you can't possibly support this. It'd be the same as like Elizabeth Warren identifying as a Native American and going to the casino. It's not right. <laughs> it works for her. You know, we should point out that April is a marathoner, you're a runner. Yes. And so the whole men in identifying as women in sports has I come broke very the close. I broke the American record but got a silver because a man beat me. You know, like it's not, it's not fair. I'm tired of mediocre men taking the place of females. And any woman should not want to go back to the back burner like that. It's not fair. It's not right. But it's causing a problem among feminists, right? Because they're like, oh, yeah, it's kind of an anything goes. Yeah, transgender, wait a minute here. We are losing positions. We're losing titles, competitions to men. Men are winning women's beauty contests because they identify as a woman. And so suddenly the very reason we had these rights and, safe, and spaces for women is now being trampled on. And, and you're seeing this now at the corporate level where yeah, they identify as women. We're good. We got our quotas met. And I'm not even for quotas. I am not for quotas. But, but this is crazy. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great example, and and, and this is something that gets talked about a lot, is uh, to some extent, if you just left uh, the radical leftists alone, they would eventually just eat their own tail, right? They just, the, the, the propositions that they advance eventually become so unnatural and radicalized that they can't hold up under the weight of their own absurdity. And so, uh, to some extent, this is an example of that. So you could say, hey, if you want to advance the interests of transgender people, then just have a third category, right? So you could have yep. racial minorities, you could have women, you could have transgender. But the reason they can't do that is because the radical ideology says that transgender women are women, right? You can't have a separate category without undermining the radical ideology. And so uh, in order to avoid the backlash from the woke left mob, you have to say these are in fact women uh, or else you're going to get, uh, again, right, you know, singled out for, for, for these sorts of attacks. Now, uh, I think from our perspective, you see the absurdity is obvious. And you'd mentioned earlier about women being fed up with being pushed aside by these men. I mean, there's a lawsuit just waiting to happen here, right? Uh, yeah. A woman is going to get passed over uh, for a board seat, and then she's going to sue because they put a man who identifies as a woman in that seat. And so when we talk about just bottom line corporate economics, uh, it's a risky proposition just on that basis alone, Not, you know, putting aside all the sort of deeper ideological questions and, and, and how, you know, absurd and unnatural the whole thing is. But it really does point out how uh, the left's radicalism just keeps painting itself in more and more of a corner that there's no room left to stand anymore. And then you get these examples like we were talking about in the prior segment, right? A lot of Jews that identify as progressives all of a sudden wake up after October 7th and realize that the people they've been aligning with actually hate them. A lot of feminists who have been yeah. marching lockstep with the, uh, the left-wing agenda for years all of a sudden wake up to find that all the things they've been fighting for, women's sports, women's safe spaces, uh, are being undermined and essentially destroyed because of this transgender movement. And so uh, so the only problem with waiting for the left to destroy itself in this way is how much damage they can do along the way. So we do need to push back. We need to keep raising these issues and bringing them to the attention uh, of people and holding uh, corporations accountable. But it is a great example of just how these, these radical ideologies just can't stand up under their own wait. Well, and then you got to always remember, I mean, with people that are identifying as a different gender, there can be mental problems. There can be body dysmorphic issues. There's something in their history that's causing this to happen. So these things, when everybody's playing into this fantasy land, at some point, it's these people are not stable in their mental health. Then there can be issues in the workplace that stem from this. So, I mean, that can be a whole nother issue in itself. Right. I mean, it's it's obviously a very complicated issue. And I think most of us want people to be free to live their lives however they choose as much as possible. But there's always a point at which what you claim you need for your freedom just becomes too much space that you're asking for. So, for example, if you want to identify as a woman, as a man and, and dress as a woman and try to live as a woman, you know, to a great extent, I'm just going to say, you know, knock yourself out. That's great. But when you say that I now have to affirm that through my use of pronouns and that you're going to use the government's coercive power to make sure I do that, well, that's a problem, right? Because you're essentially, as far as I'm concerned, asking me to tell a lie. And, that, and any government that forces its citizens to tell outright lies, right? This goes back to George Orwell, where one of the great uh, scenes is where, uh, you know, in 1984, the state basically forces the citizen to say that two plus two equals five. Because once they let you know that they can force you to say that, they can force you to do anything. And so similarly, forcing me to say that a man is a woman fits right in that category. You know, and then there's the, there are other issues. For example, an, an anorexic woman truly believes that she is obese mm -hmm. and that she that she must keep restricting and purging, uh, and yet it would be insane to say that doctors should affirm that identity uh, for her well-being, right? It's right. You can see, no, you're not obese. In fact, you're starving, and the most loving thing we can do for you is to let you know the truth and get you back uh, on the path to reality. Now, obviously, that's not a direct correlation, uh, but this idea that it's just so, uh, uh, you know, I've been using the word obvious a lot, got to be careful about that, um, but that it's just a very simple a matter of just affirming what people want in order to treat them well uh, is very problematic. Yeah. And you know, we're not against people who have these mental issues. 
but the loving thing is to help them to be comfortable to be who they were who they are mm -hmm. the, to accept the body they were born into whether it's anorexia or whether it's a gender issue and and we're looking long term in other countries that are saying wait a minute this yep. this isn't working out so there is a a gender uh, not a gender an agenda uh -huh. afoot where <laughs> this is being pushed and i i wish we just had two different countries where <laughs> Okay, we're going to deal with reality here, and you guys can go do your own thing and but see how that works out. everyone's rights also need to be respected. My rights matter, too. Well, right. Yeah, when the woman of the year for Sports Illustrator was Caitlyn Jen, uh, what's her name? Caitlyn Jenner. 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 Yeah. yeah, gender, gender, agenda, like all these words are mixing <laughs> in together because it's so crazy. But thank you, Stefan, for joining us today and for fighting the good fight out there. Thanks so, so much for having me. I really enjoyed the conversation.